Hey everybody, welcome back again to the Lead Today community. I don't know when you're gonna watch this video, whether you're gonna hop on now or whether you're gonna catch it uh, later on the other side. But invite others to be part of this. If it's a blessing to you, then maybe it'll be a blessing to others. So I have been talking uh, quite a bit lately about faith and and um, not to make it a church service. I'm talking as a human to humans about the importance of building faith. Uh, it, it changes everything. When, when you become a person of faith, a woman of faith, a man of faith, it changes everything. It is a game changer. So whether you are thinking right now about religious faith or you are thinking about hearts or, or passion or belief or whatever, I, I don't care. Just go ahead and go with that theme. And I've written down a lot of things that I'm not going to be able to get to uh, all today, but let's get started in the few minutes that we have together. Um, I, I want, but I want to challenge you in this way. I want to challenge you to grow, to make a commitment to go, to grow. When you think about growth, I want to encourage you to think about it in the present tense. Think about it today. In fact, that's kind of the idea of lead today is to, today counts. Today's an important day in the story of your life. So let's make it count. Let's make it something that is important. Uh, so let's include the idea of growth. All right. So to become a person of faith, we need to always be thinking about growing personally and when we think about growing personally, we think about the present tense. We think about being active in growing our faith. And we think about the imperative uh, part of growing. It's imperative that we grow. If we're not growing, we're dying. We've got to grow. <clears throat> you know, in all my years of coaching, um, athletics or, or ministry teams or business teams, one of the things that I found to be very helpful is that if you want to play at the next level, if you want to be a person who lives at the next level, however you would interpret that, um, then you have to observe the next level. If you don't spend time observing the next level, then you don't even know what the next level looks like. And in doing that, you've got to ask yourself some reflection questions. Here are some that I ask myself. Look, you know, it, 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 many of you don't know me personally, but those of you that do, I, I think and I hope and I, I want to believe that you would say this is true about me. I'm absolutely passionate and dedicated to be better today than I was yesterday. So in order to do that, I ask myself these questions. And if I don't ask myself these questions daily, I at least ask them weekly on Thursday, uh, late afternoons and early evenings as I'm kind of lining up my next week in its exactness, at least in how I hope it to be. But as humans, we know that no matter how well we plan, stuff happens. But here are four questions that I think are really powerful, and I encourage you to write them down and ask them to yourselves, if not daily, on a weekly basis, monthly basis, whatever. First, is do my behaviors, have my behaviors, do my behaviors line up with my avatar? And what I mean by that avatar is, I'm not talking about that fake person, but I'm talking about that person in your mind, that person that you see yourself to be, that you want to be, how you I want not others just to see you. I'm not talking about image necessarily as much as really who you are. Who is it that you want to be? So how do your behaviors line up with that? Here's another way of saying it. Here's the second question. Do my habits line up with my hopes? I have hopes. But do my habits support those hopes? Here's the third. Does my input, does my input amply supply my required output? Now, one of the things that I have been guilty of in my life is that I'm such a sprinter that I can burn myself out. I can burn myself out. And the way that I have to slow myself down is, is I have to reflect and say, what am I allowing into my head? What am I allowing into my body? What am I allowing into my circle, my relationship circle? Uh, who am I allowing into that? And, and I have to examine my input. Am I getting enough new stuff? Am I getting enough encouragement, enough instruction? Um, uh, am I getting enough 
that it supplies what I got to produce, what I got to produce? That's a pretty important question. Pretty important question. And then um, if I say yes, do we realize that if we say yes to something, we're saying no to something else? So I ask myself every Thursday afternoon, what am I saying yes to? And am I, do I still want to say yes when I realize what I'm saying no to in order to have the time to do the yes? All right. So those are four really important questions. Now, here, here's, here's the secret. You cannot answer these questions if you're not asking them. You got to ask them. You got to ask these questions to yourself. All right. So that's the first thing about habits is you have to have reflection questions. Let's see. We've, we've got some time left here. Let me go into the next section of becoming a person of faith because people of faith, they observe and people of faith reflect, right? Because they're looking for meaning and significance. Their, their, the, their life counts. Today counts. I said that. So let me share with you. I think I have time to do this. If not, we'll pick up where I leave off. Um, I call these the five R's of reflection. The five R's of reflection. The first question I want to ask you is, what are you reading? Do you find your, and maybe you say, you know, I just don't have time to read. Okay, that's a problem. You've got to make time to read. You've got to read. No matter your temperament, you've got to read. I want to encourage you to do that. But we tend to kind of read what we want to read, which, you know, that's not bad. But what I want to challenge you is to do some cross-training in your reading. Maybe read a genre that you haven't read or something you haven't read in a long time. And if you're reading, have you ever thought about meditating on what you're reading? And if you're meditating on what you're reading, have you thought about memorizing? Because you can't really meditate if you don't memorize. Memorization and meditation um, our brother and sister. You know, right now I'm, I, I, I have memorized Psalm 1, I don't know how many times in my life, and I'm brushing up on that again, and I'm challenging everybody in my community, particularly in these, in these incredible times of 2020, and all the temptations that can come in our life, is to read Psalm, uh, not just read Psalm chapter 1, but memorize Psalm chapter 1. It's not hard. It's easy. It's, it's really easy. I think there's six verses. Uh, powerful, powerful verses. <clears throat> so uh, what are you reading? Second is uh, your root. So f- five R's, your route or your root, however you want to uh, pronounce it. First is you're reading your route. You know, uh, where are you traveling? Uh, where, and you may say traveling, this is 2020. Okay, I get it. I, I get that. But, but even in your city, um, are there new neighborhoods that you have driven down? Are there new things that you have, are experiencing? Um, it's important to to travel. Um, almost every journey that our route that I have gone on in my life has changed my life. Um, when I went to Bolivia, absolute game changer. You know, changed my life. Building houses in Mexico changed my life. Visiting the dump in uh, t- uh, outside of Tijuana, Mexico, where people actually live. You know, changed. You know, changed my uh, my my life. You know, traveling in Europe uh, is a different perspective. Uh, Going to, you know, I'm from the West Coast. So when I traveled to the East Coast, it really helped me with the history of our nation. You know, just where, where, where are you traveling? How are you building your life and building the faith and the reverence in your life? I got to hurry here. And then your routine. Uh, be careful, you know, when, when we teach about discipline and character and growth, we often start teaching about routine. It's good to have a routine. But sometimes your routine can get so old it becomes a rut. So it's sometimes good to change your routine. If you change your routine, you'll change your faith muscles. You'll change your faith muscles. Well, you know, I didn't even come close to getting through uh, what I wanted to talk about today. But this is a good start. I'll be back on in the next uh, couple days or so. Be looking uh, for this. And, and hey, grow your faith. If you grow your faith, you're going to be a healthier person. You're going to be a happier person. You're going to make a bigger difference in this world. Let's continue to talk about growing our faith. God bless you all. Have a good week.